Meet Clive. Meet Charlie. And this is Stuart, but we don't talk about Stuart because Stuart's rubbish. And meet Humphrey. We call him Humphrey because he looks like a hairy haggis. Humphrey the hairy haggis. However, if you take his hair off, you can see that he's just the same as Charlie and Clive. It's the Rode VideoMic X. These are what I run and gun with on my vlog, and also what I made that ice choir recording with, linked above. They're the best kind of hot shoe mountable DSLR mic that I could find, and they're made by an Australian company called Rode. Rode is a bit of a, an enigma for me because, well, it's renowned, if you don't mind, Oscar. Out the way, Oscar, thank you. It's kind of a company that's renowned for making reasonably priced, agreeable mics really cheap and really shit mics, and some really good mics. I can't imagine what it's like working for a company like Rode. I don't know, I imagine them, say, coming up with their next video mic and sitting down to discuss maybe what it's going to be called. And someone kind of pauses and goes, right, so is this one of our shit mics? Is it one of our reasonably priced, agreeable mics? Or is it a good mic? Say it's the best video mic they've ever made. Do they sit around and go, well, we can't call it the Rode Video Mic because there already is a Rode Video Mic and that's shit. So much so, we made a better one and called it Rode Video Mic Pro, but because it's got the word pro in the title, it's definitely not for pros. And then we made one that we hoped pros would use, so we called it Pro Plus. But then we thought we could make an even better one, so we called that the Video Mic X. What do we call this one? Video Mic Pontiff. And as a consequence, when I think of Rode, I think average, which is unfair because some of their mics are, are great. Take Sennheiser, for example. Now their DSLR camera mic is the worst mic I've ever used. Not only did it sound like toilet, it also just didn't stay in the shoe at all. So much so, I can't even show you this mic because a truck ran it over when it fell off my camera as I was crossing a road. But somehow Sennheiser maintains its brand value. Is it the Germanic name or is it because they have such kind of long form in making such high quality stuff? Although I think it's a risky strategy to enter into a new marketplace with something that's not fit for purpose. When I go into a studio, Often I'll come away that little bit poorer because someone will show me something that sounds amazing. But if someone were to play me a vocal take that I thought was just stunning and when asked what microphone they used, if they were to say, oh, it was a Rogue Doobly 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 Pro Plus, I'd go, yeah, I'm not getting one of them. Which is a shame because there's no doubting that Humphrey is a very good microphone. I think this is a bit of a, an outlier mic for Rode because it's it's you know really good quality and it's not affordable not for a DSLR mic anyway it contains two condenser mics in a flum flum pair it sits in the hot shoe of your DSLR but it uses it as a cold shoe I think that's the right way of referring to it i.e it is powered independently via a nine volt battery it connects to the camera via a stereo audio cable and has a selection of filters and gain boosters I use it in this configuration with the bottom rolled off at 75 hertz and with the gain flat I have yet to distort a signal into the microphone so it's easy to use provided you remember to which means that often I'll return from far afield like LA with footage like this when I set up this vlog you know I knew nothing about photography still know nothing about it kind of have intuit certain things I think I'm shooting into the sunlight at the moment I thought I could at least try to get the sound good you know if I'm going to be talking about sound sampling and music it'll be terrible if I have something that's in mono that's you know, doesn't, isn't kind of at all engulfing, which is why I went for this mic. It costs over 400 quid, over 400 pounds. Uh, that's around 500, $550, uh, which is a lot for a DSLR mic. But as I said, I wanted to at least try and make this vlog sound good. There is a catch though, and why I've had to buy three of these microphones, because for the first four months it works well, even if it does look a bit stupid. Then it starts working less well, not enough to warrant it being taken back and replaced. It just starts doing this. And when that happens, this happens. And whilst it still works, it just makes my life totally intolerable, which is why I bought Clive and then Charlie. 
So then I tried using a lav mic, which clips onto your lavalier. I don't know what a lavalier is. Is it a very niche word for that bit where your buttons are on your shirt? They get to the camera via a radio pack. The problem with these are they don't really work when you're in conversation with other people, but also they're tremendously fragile and connecting any sound source via radio is always fraught with possibilities. We've all seen Spinal Tap. So four months ago, I bought Humphrey, thinking somehow, some way, this time it would be different. But of course it isn't. My four months are up. So I checked out this guy called Peter McKinnon. He has a vlog. He's a photographer, shoots really, really good footage, and he always seems to have kind of okay sound. And it seems that he uses a road that's halfway between shit road and really expensive road coming in at just over 200 quid. I reckon possibly between 250, 300 dollars. Now, the build quality is no way that of this mic. Now it is mono, but I thought half the price of, see, but I was thinking one capsule that's half the price of two capsules, surely that would mean this capsule is the same quality as that capsule. That's how it works, right? It's also more unidirectional, I hear, which will mean maybe I don't have to shout so much into the microphone when I'm out and about. And it has some cool features. It has the same filters pretty much as the Video Mic X and a gain booster, but also it records two signals simultaneously. One ducked back, I think minus 6 dB. So if you overload the signal, you have an alternative within your edit software, which you can use. But the really cool thing that the Video Mic X doesn't do is it magically switches on and off automatically when the camera powers up and down. So no more of this. So I thought I'd take it for a spin and compare this new video mic, don't have a name for it yet, with Humphrey. Proximity test, about three meters with Humphrey. Proximity test, distance of, I don't know, maybe three meters, something like that, with the new mic. on Humphrey main road with the new mic. This is at a distance where I have to throw my voice to about 10 meters, maybe more. Haggisy Humphrey. This is at a distance where I need to throw my voice. I don't know, probably about 10 meters away, I guess, maybe more. New mic. Standard static mid shot on the new mic. Standard static mid shot on Humphrey. Wind on Humphrey, but we could do a couple of different tests here. We can do um, uh, going off axis. So let's start and go, I think clockwise would be better. So this is me left perpendicular to the camera, moving forward, bit of wind, around, 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 around. And now I'm right perpendicular to the camera and now I'm behind the camera, all at the same kind of uh, radius. And then it might be nice because we do these kind of chats. Oh, I have to get really low. <clears throat> so these kind of chats on top of a mountain. Oh, my misters are getting really um, quite chilly. Oh, wind on the new mic. See, we could do a couple of tests here. One glove. Uh, so if we go, let's actually go around clockwise. Go off the axis. So this is me standing perpendicular left to the camera and then going forward and around, it's a bit windier on this one, around, trying to keep the same radius, around and then this is me speaking perpendicular to the right and then on the, the back of the camera, same radius and then things I do for science. Oh, oh my fling flangs. Noisy environment number one on Humphrey. Noisy environment number one on New Mike. Noisy environment number two on New Mike. Noisy environment number two on Humphrey. A very noisy test on Humphrey. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually speak a bit quieter and see if uh, you can hear me above this racket. Very noisy test on new mic with me projecting, but I'm also going to speak a bit quieter to see if you can make me out above this racket. The all-important 
walking along, speaking at arm's length directly into the camera. Um, listening not only for the quality of the voice, but also if there's any kind of wobble noise, because it's on this uh, flash whoopsie, shit, spring mount thing. And it's getting a bit of a windy buffeting. Sounds like a 1960s British porn star. Um, so we're listening to the actual camera noise itself as well. All important walking along shot. Uh, we're not only listening out for the quality of the voice, about arm's length from the camera, uh, we're also listening to if there's actually any camera noise. Now, the nuts on the back of this uh, microphone uh, are loose, so there will be a bit of vibration. It's getting a fair old breezy whacking from the old uh, wind here. Sounds like, well, I don't know what that sounds like. Sounds like kind of like a sadistic kind of sex act. Right, so that's that one. So that theory about the one capsule being as good as that one, well, that's just bollocks, isn't it? This turns out to be exactly half as good as this. A bit shit. So as with most sound equipment and most things in life, really, the more reliable something is, the more shit it tends to be. Think of a pair of kind of elasticated slacks. And the better it sounds, the less reliable it is, the more fragile it is. So you find things that are kind of good at one thing. You can afford to buy it, it does this thing well, and is reliable at doing that one thing. And sometimes you'll find something that is so brilliant for absolutely everything, but it is so mind-blowingly expensive, you'd never dream of leaving the home with it. So it seems where my vlog is concerned, I'll be relying on my SM7B for stationary stuff in a controlled environment. And for being mobile within a controlled environment, I'll use this lav mic. All important, running and gunning. Who am I kidding? I never run on these vlogs. I'll be using the new Video Mic Pro Plus. And for these pretty static shots, well, for now, I'll be sticking with Humphrey. If you have a name for the new running and gunning mic, um, please put it in the comments down below and subscribed if you haven't done. Uh, I've got two films coming up this next week which answer two very burning questions. And one of those films is made with the new mic, run and gun style. Hit that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. One of those, if you like this video, is always welcome. See you again next time.